Thank you so much, Sister Mandy, for your amazing words. Thank you, Pastor Josh. I don't dare try to pronounce your last name. <laughs> and this great church for the opportunity to be at this conference. I don't take it by like, I don't take it lightly that the Lord, he has given me this opportunity. So I say thank you to Almighty God. Everything that I am and will ever hope to be, I owe it all to Jesus Christ. If anyone should ever write my life story, for whatever reason death might be, I want them to write like the late Reverend James Cleveland said, one day she was lost but Jesus found her. And Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. If Jesus ever happened to you, it'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. There is no telling what the Holy Ghost wants to do in this room tonight. So you may as well let go and let God. Open your eyes, open your ears, clap your hands, shout with the voice of triumph. I believe tonight this is a destiny meeting. We have not arrived in this room by accident. But each of us were chosen by God, handpicked by God for this meeting. I don't know how you came here tonight, but you will have an opportunity to leave here differently. See, when Jesus began to step into any environment, he always leaves that environment different. He cannot step into your presence and leave you the same way that you have come. Because with God, nothing is impossible. You're gonna come up with something if you encounter God tonight. Mahisha kataba, pushikiti andaraba. I feel the presence of the Lord. And it was the prophet Zechariah that wrote in Zechariah chapter number four, verse number six. If you need something to happen in your life, it will not happen by might. It will not happen by power, but it will happen by the spirit of the living God. And everywhere the spirit of the living God goes, there is life. Where the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. So honored to be here tonight. And I feel a moving of the Holy Ghost on me. I will not get in the way of God, but I will just be an instrument in his hand and he can just play me like a violin if he wants to. I don't care which tune he began to strum. Somebody, you've been praying. Somebody, you have been fasting and seeking God. This is your meeting. And this is your night. And this is your moment. You don't even have to wait till I get to the message. You can begin to interact with God and something can transpire in your life. It's time for us to go beyond program. Step one, step two, sing two or three songs, take an offering and go home. Do something different. 
If you do something different, he's going to respond differently. I'm just a trophy of grace, a masterpiece of God's mercy. I'm in the master's hand, and anything that gets in the master's hand become a masterpiece. Don't let the devil lie to you and tell you you cannot be a masterpiece. If you are in the master's hand, you will become a masterpiece. I see the Holy Ghost drawing a line in the sand tonight. And he's inviting you tonight to walk into a realm with him that you've never walked before. There's an open invitation from the Holy Ghost. See, I'm not bound by a message and an iPad. We've got to learn how to walk in the spirit. We've got to trust in the moving of the Holy Ghost. It was Genesis chapter number one that said the spirit of the Lord began to move and when he moved, darkness become light. All you need is one encounter with God. One single encounter with the Holy Ghost can change your life forever. It doesn't take 10. The Spirit of God just moved. And when God begins to move, anything can happen. Your situation that you brought here tonight can be changed. Some of you have come from circumstances that are beyond your control. But God can control it. It's beyond anything that you can do about it. But when the Holy Ghost steps into it. Satan wanted you to believe that it's always going to be the way that it is in your life. But anytime we place God in the equation, it comes up different. The Bible says he sits on the circle of the earth and his kingdom rule over all. The prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah chapter number 40, we can't even measure the water that's in the hollow of his hand. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Go read your Bible. Isaiah chapter 40, the everlasting God, he does not faint. There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith, and them that have no might, he increased. Even the young men get tired, but they that wait on the Lord. I believe I'm in the house tonight with folk that are waiting on the Lord. I'm not talking about waiting on your employer, waiting on your husband, waiting on your wife, or waiting on your children. You might not get a response, but when you wait on the Lord, he will answer. There's no mountain too high for him to climb. There's no valley too wide that he won't cross for you. Our God is powerful. He's mighty. He can pick you up, turn you around. I have no business standing before you tonight. I was eight years old when Pastor, now Bishop Anthony Mangan and Mickey Mangan started picking me up on a Sunday school bus. I didn't come for the spirit. I didn't come for to get baptized. I came for the bubble gum, the candy, the pickles, and the cookies. 
we didn't have all of that at home. But something got a hold of me. Something from another world touched my world, and I was different. You maybe see it. <laughs> I'm just warming up. <laughs> you knew what I was when you called me here. <laughs> they knew Angie. They knew Pastor Jim. When they found me and I got the Holy Ghost at eight. I'll never forget, I tell Pastor and Mick all the time, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Got the Holy Ghost at eight, baptized in Jesus' name at 14. But by the time I was 15, I became rebellious. Got into alcohol, got into bad relationships, going from one bad relationship to another. Got into a relationship with a guy and he said he was going to kill me. And God did not lead me down that road. I led myself. And I surrendered to Satan and I went down that road. And I remember thinking God didn't raise me for this and the church didn't raise me for this and I'm coming home. But since the die long, I didn't know how to get home. But there was a love of God that was there with me in the pig pen. There was a love of God that was there with me every place I went. I remember one night, Pastor Josh, the gentleman that I was dating, he said, I'm getting ready to kill you. And I began to weep and cry. And he started choking me around my neck. And the only thing that I knew to do was to say Jesus. Yeah. Because Jesus is a one word prayer. Don't let Satan fool you. You may not have time to pray a thesis or a dissertation for your prayer. But if you cry out, Jesus, have mercy on me. He dropped me and I went to the floor and I'm here tonight to tell the story. See, I was still married to the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. It chased me down until I was found and brought me back into the fold. So I stand before you tonight owing him my life for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to love you the most? Those that I have done the most for. According to the scripture. Folk ask me, why do you love him so much? Because he first loved me. He picked me up and turned me around and established my goings. And I'm not supposed to be here. I don't have the pedigree. I don't have the last name. But when God decides to lead you and God picks you, the world or hell can do nothing about it. And if he ever put something on the inside of you and you walk away, don't worry. He will be back <laughs> for what he placed in. Yeah. Yeah. So now you know a little bit about who's speaking to you tonight. Mm -hmm. 
when the song began to be sung, I went to my knees tonight. I told the Lord it began on my knees. It will continue on my knees. And I will finish this race on my knees. I believe I have a word from the Lord tonight. Someone have come for a change and the change is now. If you have your Bibles, Esther chapter four, verse 14, we will go into the word of the Lord and I will read one scripture before I begin. Esther chapter 4, verse 14. I thank this conference so much for this invitation. For if thou, this is Mordecai speaking to Esther here, if thou all together, read with me, holdest thy peace at this time. You hold your peace at this time. There shall come enlargement and deliverance. I want to speak to this conference on this first night on this subject. Divine enlargement and deliverance. Divine enlargement and deliverance. Father, I can't do this alone. And I've already explained to the people who I am and where I've come from so they know I can't. But if you will anoint me tonight and give me your words and anoint our ears to hear, oh Lord, we will be blessed by what you will do. Give us what you desire. In Jesus' name, clap your hands and be seated. I feel something turning over in me with rapid speed. I do not know all what God will do tonight, but I know he's up to something. I know he's up to something. We weren't created to live a small life. We weren't created to have small dreams. We weren't created to live on the lower part of this world. But God created us to live an abundant life. I don't care who you are, where you have come from, or where you have been. God desires for you and I to live an abundant life. Yes. There is nothing God will not give to his children. Even if you lose all of the memory on your iPad and the internet goes out on you, he will give you what you need to say. <laughs> but God has chosen us to give us great things, mighty things, and powerful things. He chose us to expand, enlarge, and to deliver. I believe tonight that God is going to move in such a manner that somebody will be changed. There is no telling what God is going to do in our lives. I'm just going to step away from
from that until it loads back up. <laughs> but if it don't, don't worry, I'm full of it. <laughs> what the enemy wants to do is to keep you in a low level thinking, in a low level position. And he wants you to believe that your God is not big enough to handle your situation. Your God is not great enough to take you out. Your God cannot deliver you from the circumstance that you are in. But Ephesians 3 and 20 says, our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or even think. According to the power that works in you. Where are you going to get this power? He told him in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Throw that up on the screen. I'll just walk it out. <laughs> Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. You're going to receive power. Yeah. After that, the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Quit trying to get your power out of a relationship. Yeah. Quit trying to get your power from your employer. Quit trying to get your power from your pastor alone. Sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so. But you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes on you. The power does not come no other way. It comes from the Holy Ghost. So he tells them, you go back in the city of Jerusalem and you tarry until you are endued with this power from on high. My problem have been, I've not waited. That word terror means you wait till it gets there. We get up, Brother Wigner, before it gets to us. We want enlargement. We want blessings. We want favor. We want all of these things, but we don't want to wait. And he said, unless you wait on me, you will not receive. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And the reason why, maybe I'll preach this other message tomorrow or Saturday. You need this flowing message. Is that okay, Pastor? Yes. <laughs> I love it. I live in the flow. <laughs> the reason why we need this power, because the carnal natural man, we are not born with the mind of Christ. How are you going to know what to do if you do not have the mind of Christ? So God gives us the Holy Spirit and he downloads on the inside of us his mind. The reason why we have to have the mind of Christ is because every dimension of spiritual possibility is dependent on your mind. Yes. 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 If your mind is not in the game, then you cannot win the game. I don't care what you are dealing with. If your mind is not there, you cannot win. So he downloads on the inside of us his mind. Yes. Many times in the earth, our mind is on everything but Christ. How are you going to make the right decision if you don't have the mind of Christ to do it? And God gives us his mind when we are filled with his spirit. And we need the mind of God to stop the enemy. Do you know the only legal way that God and Satan can interact with you, it is through your mind. 
The way God communicates with you is through your mind, and the way the enemy communicates with you is through your mind. The mind is the battlefield of the spirit. If you win or lose, you're going to lose it in the mind. If we allow the enemy access to our mind, he will gain footage on the battlefield. Don't think that you're not in a battle. From the cradle to the grave, you and I are going to battle. Our Bible is a book about battle. Jesus Christ endured battles, and so will you and I. And the battle is in the mind. And if Satan can pollute your mind, he can pollute your spirit. How does he pollute your mind? He have to access the gates to get to you. I told you God must want me to flow. I'm just flowing. There's only two ways he can get to you. It's through two gates. And those gates are your eyes and your ears. If he can get you to look upon something, then he can enter into your gate uh, and he can start polluting you. If he can get you to listen to something, he can enter into you through that ear gate and he can begin to pollute you. That's why the Bible says, gird up the loins in your mind. Philippians 4 and 8, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are true, I need you to start thinking on those things. It's the mind that Satan is after. It's the mind that God is after. It's your mindset. And the reason why we have to have our minds in the right place, it is because our mind causes our mouth to speak out words. Out of the abundance of the heart, which means mind, the heart, the mouth begin to speak. And if Satan can control your mouth, he can control your destiny. Look at the writer of Proverbs. He said, death and life are in the power of your tongue. Your victory is in your mouth. And so God downloads inside of us his mindset and his words. Every time Jesus speaks to you, it's going to be probably a reference from the word. It will align with the word so that he can align your mouth with the word. He wants your mouth aligned with the word so that you can receive what the word says about you. Your mind is fertile soil. Everything that you place in your mind will grow whether you water it or not. Your mind is fertile soil. So whatever you put in it, it is going to come up. What are you putting in your mind? We're talking about enlargement tonight. I'll get back to that. I'm in the flow. This battlefield of the spirit is dependent on you managing your mind. You've got to get your mind wrapped around the right things. You have to get your mind wrapped around the word of God because God wants your mouth to be in alignment with the word. He knows that death and life are in the power of the tongue. How are you going to overcome the enemy? Read the book of Revelation. It's in my notes. I can't get to it, but I can tell you it's in Revelation. I think chapter 12. And they overcame him. Who's this him? Dream it out to me. Who's the him? Who is your enemy? Who's fighting you every day? Who's trying to take away your finances? Who's trying to deal with your husband issues? Who's trying to deal with your... And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. I know the blood of the lamb is powerful. 
Because only his blood was rare enough to take away sin. But the blood by itself does not help you to overcome Satan. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. You will never overcome the devil just by the blood of the Lamb. You've got to open up your mouth and you got to align your mouth with the word of God. You've got to know who you are. Satan must know your name. It's time for us to stop being afraid of the devil and stop allowing him to put us on the run. And it's time for us to put him. It was the prophet Daniel that said, the people who do know their God shall wet strong and do great exploit. How? by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. See, the devil will tell you the Holy Spirit is just for certain folk. The Holy Spirit is for sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, but it ain't for you. It's for your grandmother, your aunt, but it's not for you. What he wants to do is not allow you to have access to the power. Luke 10 and 19 says, Behold, I give you power. Brother Wheatner, I don't have any business running from Satan. It's time for us to stand up and be bold. And when Satan comes your way, you begin to quote the word of God and you can run him all the way back up into hell where he came from. You've got to know who you are. See, some of our problems, we don't know who we are. I'm too busy trying to be like so-and-so, act like so-and-so, do what so-and-so does. I leave out of my God-given lane to step into somebody else's lane because I thought it was better. But the Bible says you need to run the race that is set before you. Every time God creates a man or woman, he creates you specifically a designer's original. There are no two sets of handprints that are alike. The doctor tells us that there are no two sets of eyes that are alike. All of us are designers original. You don't have to be like anybody else. When God created you, he created you a designer's original. Nobody can beat you walking like you walk. Nobody can beat you talking like you talk. No one... Why are we trying to imitate and duplicate? And God said, get in your lane and be what I called you to be. It's okay to have an example, but God wants you to be you. And when you run within the parameters of your lane, that is where your anointing is. That is where your power is. But you can only get that when you get the mind of Christ. You have to have your mind in the game. There are people under the sound of my voice right now. God is ready to do something unique and different in your life. God wants to do something so powerful for you tonight. It will amaze you.
This whole first night, enlargement and deliverance. God's ready to do it for you. Many times the enemy will bring about his words into your mind and cause you to believe different things than what the word of the Lord says. But we weren't created to live these small, insignificant lives. We weren't created to live lives outside of what the Lord has planned for us. Have any of you ever had a dream that God began to show you things about your life that he desired to do? In this enlargement conference, on this first night, I read the scripture to you about Esther. Let me give you a little background of this girl that I'm talking about. Esther was an orphan. She was raised by her relative, Mordecai. And she was an obedient, obedient child. She obeyed what her relative told her to do. And she did and whatever he asked. And he, she came when he told her to come. And she left when he told her to leave. And Esther was an obedient child. But it came to pass that the king wanted to have a different wife. His first wife, she did not obey him. So now he's looking for another one. And you know the story. Esther was chosen. Esther went from being an orphan having nothing to living in the palace having everything. Now, I don't know about you. If I go from rags to riches, <laughs> and I'm enlarged, <laughs> not that I don't love you anymore, but I don't have a lot of time. And sometimes I may not remember how I got to this place. <laughs> and so it came to pass, there was a decree that went out. The wicked Haman said he was going to destroy all of the Jews. And Mordecai, he began to set in sackcloth and ashes, and he began to fast, and he began to pray. Every time God is going to enlarge you and deliver you, you must begin to come into a different frame of mind. Mordecai went from eating to not eating. From drinking to not drinking. And he wouldn't change his raiment. And Esther sent him out raiment, clothes to put on. And he said, uh-uh. Verse 13 of Esther chapter 4, Mordecai commanded to answer Esther this. He said, I'm not going to put these clothes on and I'm not going to stop fasting, and I'm not going to stop praying until God moves. Yeah. See, fasting and praying will put you in a mindset where you are able to hear God more clear. Yeah. Why will fasting and praying change your mindset? I'll tell you why. Because fasting and praying are authorized systems of the spirit. Amen. And they have been proven to work and they have been designed by God. And the people of God knew it. So Mordecai tells Esther, I'm not going to stop fasting and praying until God moves. If you make up your mind tonight that you're not going to stop 
praying and seeking God until he moved, you're going to see a difference in your life. Mordecai said to Esther, and Mordecai told her to go before the king. She said, he have not called me for 30 days. And if I go before him unsummoned, I will die. When Achaia gave her these words in Esther chapter 4, verse 13, he commanded these words to be spoken to her. Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than any of the Jews. For if you all together hold your peace at this time. I want to speak a word to someone right here. God has opened a window in this place tonight. And if you hold your peace, you could be holding yourself back from your enlargement and your deliverance. He said, if you hold your peace, enlargement is going to come from somewhere else. If you hold your peace tonight, somebody sitting next to you could get an enlargement and a deliverance, and it could pass you by. It was the late Leonard Ravenhill that said these words, and I quote. He said, opportunities of a lifetime must be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. Who knows what the Lord is speaking to you tonight? If you hold your peace at this time, if you do not respond to the Holy Spirit at this time, who knows? And Esther, she began to tell him these words. She said, I'll begin to fast and I'll begin to pray three days. And I will go in unto the king. And if I perish, I perish. God is waiting on you and I tonight for enlargement and deliverance. So many times we think that enlargement and deliverance is going to be handed to us. But God never promised us victory without fighting. He just promised you that help would be there on time. In order to have enlargement and deliverance, you're going to have to have the word and you're going to have to war. The war for Esther was she had to fast and risk her life. The war for you and I may be different. We all have to fast and pray. But God desires to bring enlargement to you and deliverance. I didn't know that enlargement and deliverance could come to somebody simple like me. I've just told you my pedigree. I'm the least of the least of the least. So how could God use somebody like me that was a fornicator? Alcoholic. A liar. How could he do that? And God said, when you come to me, I can clean up anything that you have. God began to work in my life through the power of prayer. You'll never get where you need to be if you don't just start talking to God. 
It won't happen by osmosis. But you have to pray. Why? James 5 and 16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, it availeth much. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. See, I'm not just talking about enlargement and deliverance. I'm talking about divine enlargement. I'm talking about exceeding abundantly above anything that you can ask or think enlargement. I'm talking about taking the land enlargement. I'm talking about a total radical change deliverance. There are people in this house right tonight. God's getting ready to do something radical for you. Some of you have come into this room and you know you need something from God. Why would you come to church on a Thursday night if you didn't need something from God? I heard the Holy Ghost tell me to tell you all things are possible through him. Ask again. He said, ask again. I never knew that enlargement and deliverance could come through such a one as I. Throw that first picture up there. I sent some photos. The Lord trusted me with this message. I was hungry for more. I got tired of going to church, just being filled with the Holy Ghost, singing in the choir, paying my tithes, being a good person as best I could. I felt that there was more. There was an enlargement. So I began to pray. And I fell asleep reading a book on Popsy Gibson who is Sister Vesta Mangan's dad. And in the book, there was a little girl who had drank kerosene and died. And the mother told the doctor that was there, don't touch my baby until Popsy Gibson gets here. Popsy Gibson was an old man, and by the time he got there, they were just crying and weeping. And he told them, if you don't believe, just step aside. And he shut himself in the room with this dead girl. And he laid his hand on this dead little girl who had drank kerosene. And he said, devil, this room isn't big enough for you and me, and I ain't leaving. in his hand. Hallelujah. I say, God, I want this in my life. Yeah. And so I fell asleep reading book, that in the book and I woke up the next morning with that, or that hunger for enlargement, that thirst for enlargement. See, as long as you're satisfied where you are, that's where you're going to be. But if you ever get up and say, I want more, and you start moving toward more, you're going to get more. If you ever get up and say, I want to be enlarged, I want more, I want to elevate, then you're going to be elevated. And the Lord said to me, go to the grave of Popsy Gibson. 
I knew where it was. I'd been there numerous times. It was Memorial Day 2017. And when I got to the grave, I began to walk that grave. I said, whatever was in his eyes, put it in my eyes. Whatever was in his ears, put it in my ears. Whatever was in his mouth, put it in my mouth, oh God. Let me have this anointing like Popsy Gibson, God. If you did it in Popsy, you can do it in me. See, sometimes you think certain folk are anointed, but you can't be. Liar. Sometimes you think certain name brand people are anointed, but you can't be. Liar. And God said to me, you go home and start the pr a prayer meeting in your house tonight. I had never had a prayer meeting in my house. So I started calling two or three folks, Sister Dylon. And they started coming by the hundreds to a raggedy bus route kid house. People started getting the Holy Ghost. And I started baptizing them in Jesus' name. Pastor gave me a key to the baptistry. I baptized them at 9 o'clock at night. 2 p.m. in the evening, 9 o'clock in the morning, just whenever they would come, I would baptize them because I wanted the enlargement in my life. I wanted to see deliverance in my world. My world was suffering. Is your world suffering? See, something's about to happen to you in the next few minutes. You can feel it. You can feel the shifting of it already. You can feel it on your I'm telling you, something... Somebody's going to be delivered. Yes. Satan cannot stop you from receiving what God has for you. You feel it right now on you. Yeah. God's about to take you to another dimension. Yeah. God is turning things around right now for your good. There are some things that's getting ready to happen in your life. It's going to be as if you never even did it before. New life, new hope. New joy, new peace, new strength, new anointing, new grace. See, what hell wants you to believe is that only Jennifer Williams is going to have this power. Or, 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 or Pastor Anthony Mangan is going to have this power. But it's for whosoever will and whosoever wants it. I wanted it. And I went after it. So you can't get it just sitting down. You're going to have to get up and you're going to have to go after it. I went home and started these prayer meetings in my house and it kicked off a revival. And that's how I'm standing before you today. I never knew God could use me. It was the late T.F. Tinney. Before he died, two weeks before he died, he beckoned for me to come to him. And he said, the revival that had begun in your house is no small flicker, but it is a mighty flame, and it is going around the world. My assignment tonight is to be the torchbearer and hold it out to you. I'm bearing this torch that the Lord has placed in my hand. And if I can do it, then you can do it. And if I can be it, then you can be it. If I can say it, then you can say it. If I am anointed, then you can be anointed. If I can lay hands on the sick, and you can lay hands on the sick.
in the Dallas Fort Worth area and the Lord said just lift your hands and pray for the congregation for healing I just lifted my hands and I prayed for healing for the congregation I took about five steps to my right and a lady tapped me on my shoulder I said yes ma'am she said when you prayed for healing I had a large tumor on my neck and it's gone morning about 7 a.m. 7 30 they brought a little boy into my prayer room and the mother said he had a rare heart condition and I said what are you where are you going she said I'm going to Dr. Anita Gold's office where is it I said about a block from my house I said but go get that baby out of the car we're gonna lay hands on this baby and God's gonna heal this baby she went and got that little boy out of the car I took that baby in my arms and I said God I this baby at your nail scarred feet. I place this baby in your nail scarred hand. I place this baby on the stripes that are on your back and by your stripes this baby is healed. I said now take your baby to Dr. Go and let her confirm it. She took her baby to the doctor. We need to confirm some of these miracles. She took her baby to the doctor. Dr. Anita go examine the baby upside down, inside out, and couldn't find one thing wrong with that baby's heart. I was preaching in Kentwood. You see how I'm dropping these names? This is real stories. The lady you had cancer in both breasts. She received the Holy Spirit at the altar with the evidence of speaking with tongues. And if you're in this house tonight and you've not received it, it is one of the most phenomenal gifts that you can ever have. And she stood at that altar and she said unto me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have surgery in two days. They're going to remove the cancer. They're going to start the chemo. the surgery on Tuesday. The doctor cut her open to remove the cancer and start the radiation. He couldn't find cancer anywhere in her body. He sold her up and he sent her You ready for this to happen in your life? God wants it more than you. I'm seated by this woman here on the airplane. And I was just nice to the lady. And she said, I'm so happy somebody nice to me. Everybody's been so mean. I started talking to her. I said, have you heard about the Holy Spirit yet? She said, I heard about it, but I don't know much about it. I said, you can get the Holy Ghost right here on this airplane. I started praying for this woman on the airplane. The woman received the Holy Ghost on the airplane. Next picture. Can you stop that video for a minute? Stop it just for a minute. You hear that woman talking in tongues? Pastor Jim, I was at the Hilton Hotel getting ready to preach in Montgomery, Alabama. 
preparing my sermon. And my friend said, Sister Jennifer, can you come down here and pray for a lady? No, I'm preparing my sermon. And instantly, I thought in my mind, this could be the reason why I'm in Montgomery, Alabama. was standing on the sidewalk of the Hilton Hotel, began to talk to this woman about the Holy Ghost and how God could change her situation. Play that video. She received the Holy Ghost on the sidewalk of the Hilton Hotel. I'm not talking about inside of the church, but on the sidewalk of the Hilton Hotel. You see him. at the doctor's office with a friend having eye surgery. This woman had been watching me on Facebook. The nurse comes out and said, this woman wants to talk to you. I went back there to see her. And she said, I want to receive the Holy Ghost I've been praying for since five o'clock this morning. We have anybody in the house tonight that's not received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with tongues? Just raise your hand if you're not. Stand to stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. You see all these people? See all these people? Every single one of them will receive the Holy Ghost tonight.
just stand for a moment. I just got a word for pastors. If you pastor a church, I just heard the Holy Ghost say, take the land. I have equipped you. I have anointed you. And I have placed my gifts on the inside of you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Fear not to move forward. For as you move forward in me, I will give you my power. And you will see a difference in your world. Do not allow the enemy to stop you. But turn your face unto me. And come into my presence. And be endued with my power. And you will gain the strength you need to move forward. Take ye the land, for I have given it unto you. Go in my power, go in my might, and speak my words, and take the land that I have given you. What you need, I will supply. You will hear my voice. And you will hear my voice clear. Walk according to my word and take the land. There is territory that you must take. And this land is waiting on you. For I have designed you and I have given you my power. Take the land. Take the land. Some of you pastors, you've been dealing with some different things. And you've not told anyone, but at times you just wanted to just give up. But I heard the Holy Ghost say, don't give up now. Find strength in my presence and take the land. Hey, come on, she taught about. Let's lift our hands here. Let's come with a new anointing on you. on the right when you get tired to hold up your hands. He's writing new messages on your heart. Preach the word.